Welcome back for another episode of the Trans Atheist with Ariane and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thanks Ryan. I'm Dr. Robert Nidick and the issue of gender dysphoria and so-called transgenderism is a critical uh, issue in the country. And as Ryan mentioned, this is not about any individual person. This isn't about a kid at Elida or a kid at this school or a kid at this school. This is a wicked, perverse ideology. Okay, this is an ideology that includes all sorts of associated ideologies and this is a culmination, this transgenderism. In reality, there are men and women, there are males and females. This is reality. This is where we live. Men have an X, uh, XY and women have a, uh, XX chromosomes. If you have a Y chromosome in general, you're a guy. If you have a Y, you're a guy. This is how reality works. And the fact that this group of evildoers in the media, in the schools, or wherever, tells a child that they're in the wrong body, that they're not right, that they feel not right, that if they take this drug or they cut this off, then they'll be okay. That's wicked. That's absolute demonic wickedness. And these children are being tortured. In fact, they're being hunted. They are being preyed upon by people in powerful positions that know this. They all know this. Propaganda. This is, this is pure propaganda. That a boy can become a girl. A boy can't become a girl. You can get drugged up. You can get cut up. You can get made up. You can get changed up. But you're just a drugged up, made up cut up, changed up, boy. That's it. And it's not about the individual boy or the individual girl. These poor souls, they suffer because of the actions of the people that are propagandizing them. The people in the media that's propagandizing them they are the ones that are suffering. You can tell that they're aiming for the kids. And this, gen it's called gender dysphoria. It's painful. It's a process inside your brain. You can't see it. It's like depression, anxiety, anorexia nervosa, bulimia. In the 70s and 80s, it was anorexia nervosa. The world had never seen that. It started in the West. Girls started with anorexia nervosa. But that was different because people realized that that was a body morph morphologic dysphoria. In other words, they had a body image incorrect assessment of their body. And people tried to help them. So if you take the anorexic equivalent of what people like to call transgenderism, for anorexia, you say, yeah, you're fat. You need to lose weight. You need to get a liposuction. No, no person would say that to someone that has anorexia. They say, you're hurting. You're, you're really hurting. How can we help you work through the pain and the suffering and the mental anguish that you're going through? What can we do? To help you come to know that God created you. Come to know that God loves you. Come to know that you are as you were created to be. 
how, how can we do that? So what's happened is people come alongside and instead of telling them the truth, tell them the lie. And this is huge. This whole woke agenda, this whole woke ideology, this whole thing is built on a foundation of lies and more lies and more lies. And at the bottom, death. Okay? So what I think we can do is to talk to our friends and our neighbors because vast numbers of people have herd instinct. You have instinct for food, you have instinct for sex, you have instinct to be part of the herd. This is an instinct that has been present in everybody. People don't like to be outside of the herd. So when all, when all their friends and when everybody's agreeing with this, people don't want to stand out here alone against the herd. But the herd and the movement and the demonic forces that are pushing this thing forward, we need to stand against that. We need to get out of the herd. You know, they have, they're pushing, pushing, pushing. The next thing is now the World Health Organization, you know, basically saying that pedophilia is fine and, and all these things. Okay, this is in the news now. And the drag queens with the little kids. They're going for the kids because satanic, demonic activity always goes for the kids. Look at Molech in the Old Testament, the worship of Baal. This ideology is wicked. Now, some people might say, well, you're hateful. I don't have anything but sympathy, and I would try to help any individual. We have to separate out the ideology from the individual. The individual is caught in a trap which turns into a compulsion, and it turns into a situation that they're very hard-pressed to get out of, as would be alcoholics, compulsive gamblers, or others. So I think it's very clear that we, that love Jesus, need to try to minister to individuals while at the same time calling out a perverse, wicked ideology. So as Ryan said, this is a spiritual battle. In Ephesians 6.12, and I wrote this down as not to butcher it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where we're wrestling. We're not wrestling against school boards and middle school kids and this, that they, they are being used as pawns by those that have control of the international microphone and media. They're being used and abused and then they'll just be discarded. So we need to try to help individuals and at the same time, we can't support things that are evil. There's right and there's wrong. Even if you are listening and you, you don't want to say anything because you don't want to stray from the herd, there's right and there's wrong, and there's many more times people than this that know that it's wrong that a girl is a girl and a boy is a boy, and no matter what you do, you don't change a girl to a boy. A girl can feel like a boy, and a girl may indeed convince themselves that, that they are, but they're not. So we need to continue to fight for truth. Jesus said to Pilate when he was being examined prior to his crucifixion, Pilate, there's a famous interview with Christ. Pilate said, 
you know, he's interviewing him, and Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. No one else has ever said that. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus wants everyone. He accepts everyone. You come as you are. But he is the truth. And he made flesh. He was made flesh and dwelt among us. So we need to proclaim the truth boldly. Um, the other issue is that this is medically a social contagion, meaning a virus is medically contagious. This is socially contagious. When you promote this at your school, when you promote lies, when you don't stand up and tell kids that this is wrong and that this is a lie and we are not going to do this, this spreads. This is spreading like wildfire all over the country. And it's spreading in part because churches, because of individuals, because of us, because of herds of people that don't speak up, we need to tell the truth that if you're a boy, you're a boy. If you're a girl, you're a girl. If you're struggling with your sexuality, millions of us have struggled with that as we go through teenage, and you come out on the other side, 95%, you figure it out. But they're not given time to figure it out. They grab them when they're five, six years old. Nationwide Hospital in Columbus, Children's in Cincinnati. You understand this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Multi-billion dollar industry. And it's projected to grow about 20% a year. You understand this is just money and numbers to big pharma. Okay. This is a big industry. And who lobbies your state house. Who lobbies our representatives? Pharma, big money, lobbyists. It's, it's up to us to, to continue to spread the truth so that the kids know. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, Jesus says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This ideology is causing many to sin. That's a very stern warning from the Lord Jesus. So we are here to try to help support Communities. This isn't about Elijah. This is going. To, this is in Shawnee. This is in Bath. This is in Spence. This is everywhere. This ideology is the doctrine of demons, the perverse ideology, and it needs to be called out. It needs to be pushed back hard on, or else you know we won't be able to say that we did our part while we were here. In the book of um, 2 Timothy, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 12, 2 Timothy 3, 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. Well, so it doesn't say all Christians. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. So the fact that this pastor, Dr. Tim White, let us use this church, that is, that, that, that's amazing. That amazes me. I mean, I, I, he, he's actually living out the, the risk of persecution. What little persecution that we get in this country anyway. And Christ says all that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. All. So sometimes I think about what have I suffered and it's not a long list. So I think that we need to speak with our friends, our neighbors, 
we need to try to encourage them to not follow the herd and take a stand on righteousness, take a stand on truth, with the aim being to push back on a wicked ideology and to help vulnerable children. Thanks.